Well, President Biden has, is headed to Europe tomorrow, where he will meet with NATO leaders and participate in the European Union summit in Brussels. Then he's headed to Poland to meet with the president of Poland, Duda, on Saturday. Well, our next guest just returned from Poland with a congressional oversight group, and we hope to be joined soon by South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Um, but, Sean, you know, a lot of people, a lot of uh, Congress members going over to the border there in Poland to understand what's actually happening, understand what we have. I understand that we have Congresswoman Mace now. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Congresswoman, good to see you. Um, love to get your reaction to what you saw while you were in Poland. The human It's devastating to, to witness. We toured uh, refugee facilities in Poland, and uh, Poland has taken in over 2 million refugees from Ukraine, and over 10 million Ukrainian families have been displaced. And it's mostly women and children that you see because the husbands and fathers have stayed back in Ukraine to fight for their freedom, their democracy, and their homeland. So, you know, he, the president's going to head over to Poland. He'll meet with President Duda um, while he's there. Um, he rejected sending MiGs to Ukraine that the Poles had offered. Um, I guess when you were there, what was the sentiment about Biden and about America uh, in light of that rejection of that request? Well, I will tell you, there's a lot of, I think, courage, a courageousness that's happening over there in Poland. And people are grateful for the United States stepping up and assisting because this is a huge task, the humanitarian crisis itself. When it comes to the Polish MiGs, um, I, I get and I, I appreciate where Poland is coming from. But of the 27 MiGs, only about half of them are actually operable. And when you're talking about what that might mean in the uh, the airspace over Ukraine, it could escalate and would be seen as an escalation into World War III, a nuclear war. And that's not something anyone wants. And one of the things I took away from our visit to Poland is that elected members of Congress should be really careful about what we're sharing uh, in, in Twitter and everything else. We don't want to give our hand to Putin, right, if we're saying we're going to send over certain kinds of uh, equipment or jets or munitions, et cetera, uh, you know, Putin will change his tactical strategies on the ground and it puts people's lives at risk as well. But what I did see is people coming together from all over the world, the generosity of the Poles, welcoming in these Ukrainian families has been nothing short of remarkable. Wow. From your interactions with the Polish people, are they worried that if Ukraine falls that they're next? I think that's the sentiment likely, and mostly in the media reports uh, that I've seen of, of our NATO allies that border either Russia or Ukraine, there is concern that they're, they could be next over time. But I will tell you, looking at this particular invasion by Russia and the way that the Ukrainian people are fighting back, Vladimir Putin wasn't expecting this. When he invaded Georgia in 2008, they rolled over in about 12 days. When he invaded Crimea, it was about a month and six days, but Ukraine uh, there's no end in sight here. And as long as they have the arms and the defense equipment to defend themselves, it looks like they're going to be able to, to push back pretty strong. And we saw earlier today in media reports that they took back a neighborhood in Kyiv. Uh, and so that's progress for the Ukrainian people. But make no mistake, um, this is a crisis of massive proportions. It does affect the United States from a supply chain perspective. 90% of the world's neon comes from Ukraine. There's lumber, there's wheat, there's barley, there are rare earth minerals, a number of uh, products that we use to make things and import things. And so uh, it'll exacerbate the supply chain issues, inflation, uh, and it's equally going to be devastating around the world, potentially, in addition to the humanitarian crisis that we're seeing over there today. You know, I, you you had tweeted out earlier that China is watching Ukraine. It's something that we've talked about a lot on the show. And I guess, you know, we've, we've talked about this whole what what this means for that relationship. Do you think that the situation in Ukraine will directly impact uh, China's next move in regard to Taiwan? I mean, are they looking at this saying, hey, if you guys don't defend these guys, there's no reason we shouldn't just go ahead and take Taiwan? Absolutely. And that's why it's so important to isolate Vladimir Putin and Russia economically uh, as swiftly as possible. And that means ensuring that there's no bank that can use the SWIFT system, that they're out of the Swiss banking system, that we isolate every single member of the oligarchy that surrounds Putin, make it extremely painful. Every $300 million yacht that we see in Italy and elsewhere uh, should be taken as well, make it so painful for them that they can't continue to fight. And I read a report today that Russian soldiers were going to run out of food and subsistence soon. And so we want to make it as painful as possible so Putin will rethink 
this and, and uh, see some sort of an off ramp because right now, I don't think there's an end in sight. Uh, the threats that he's making are, are threats that we should consider that are real. And I do not want to see China do a deal with Russia to sustain Russia to continue this war. And that's something we're going to think long and hard if China does a deal either on oil and gas or other imports from Russia to help them economically. How are we going to respond? And China absolutely is watching. And it's important that we come together, Republicans and Democrats alike. And you saw that last week. It was Republicans and Democrats joining together in bipartisan arms to put pressure on on President Biden to ban the imports of Russian oil and gas, and it worked. We need to continue to put that pressure on President Biden to continue broader sanctions packages like President Zelensky has asked for. Um, you know, Congressman, Congressman, when you, when you were coming on, I, I was thinking to myself, um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot on this, but you were a, you broke a huge barrier. You were the first woman to attend the Citadel. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion in the last week about this woman, Leah Thomas, who um, won this NCAA title and a lot of debate whether that was acceptable or not or proper. Um, and I started to think about this. Is if she or he should be registered for the draft, right? If they, if that's something that should be debated. I know Congress was talking about whether women should register for the draft. But if she is was a man and now transitioned, would that still qualify as having to, to register for the draft? I mean, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but it was something that I thought, as someone who has broken a barrier, uh, been involved in the armed services, wh where do you think we should come down on something like that? Well, I support the draft for, for every American, if we're, if we're even going to have a draft. There's some argument on whether we should have one or not, and I, I'm open to, to debate on that. But if we are going to have a draft, I don't want to, that, to communicate to my daughter that she's not good enough, right? Uh, I have many members, most members of my family, men and women, who wear the uniform. And in fact, I have family that have been deployed because of the invasion in Russia. And in fact, one of my family members is going to miss the birth of his son because of his deployment. And so uh, I, in terms of my family, we're, we're equal opportunity there. Men and women both serve in our family, and I'm, and I'm a huge supporter of that. But I'm going to tell you, I, I grew up a swimmer. I was a double-A swimmer growing up, and you seeing the barriers that women have broken in sports and business and at the Citadel and elsewhere, uh, we need, you know, women need to know that they can succeed, that they can achieve, and that some man isn't going to get in the way of that. And uh, this is a, an important discussion for us to have in our communities, in our schools, in our culture, and around the country. Congresswoman Nancy Mace, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.